Hello, Montana. We're excited to be part of 2020's summer reading program. We are going to talk today about reptiles. We have our friends from Zoo Montana here with us today. We're super excited about that. They have brought some live critters with them and are going to teach us a little bit more about reptiles and how they're not amphibians. So hang tight. We're going to switch places and teach you about reptiles. Thanks. Hi everybody, my name is Nicole. I'm the Education Specialist at Zoo Montana and today we are going to talk to you guys about the differences between reptiles and amphibians. Now these are two completely different groups but they're often talked about together because they share some common characteristics and also you'll often find them in similar areas. So today we are going to first talk about an amphibian. Now you guys might be wondering why I am wearing gloves because our first animal we're going to introduce you to is a a tiger salamander. His name is Ziggy and Simon and he is one of our amphibians that we have here at Zoo Montana. Now the reason that I'm wearing gloves is because amphibian skin is incredibly special. Their skin is very very thin and it is covered in mucus. That's kind of why they look really really slimy when people see them is because their skin it's covered in that mucus in order for them to stay moist. Amphibians can dry out really, really easily, which is why they're often found by water or in very moist habitats. They require that water in order to be able to survive. Now, the reason that I'm wearing gloves and I had my hands sprayed with special water is because I don't want him getting sick he can actually breathe through his skin, which means that oxygen, the stuff that we breathe in order to stay alive, can get into his skin, but it also means that he can get other things in through his skin as well. And that could be lotion, hand sanitizer, sunscreen, or even the natural oils of my hands. So I'm wearing these gloves in order to be able to protect him and they're covered in water in order to be able to make sure that he stays hydrated while I have him out with me. Now that is the first characteristic of what makes an animal an amphibian is that mucus coated skin. Another characteristic is that they are cold blooded. Now that means the body temperature is the same as the surrounding environment. If it's hot outside, they're hot. If it's cold outside, they're cold. They can't control their body temperature like we warm blooded animals can. Another characteristic is that they lay eggs, but these eggs are a little different than you might think of the ones that you make for breakfast. Those are bird eggs, chicken eggs, so they have a nice hard shell. These guys have soft jelly-like eggs, and those eggs need to be laid in water. Again, just like every other amphibian, when they are alive, they need to be near water. So their eggs are very very interesting looking compared to the ones that we're commonly thinking of and then the final adaptation or characteristic that makes these guys an amphibian is that they go through metamorphosis now metamorphosis is where a young salamander has to transform into an adult salamander but the youngsters look completely different now you guys might think of this when you think of frogs where a tadpole has to turn into a frog the tadpole are born with a tail, they have no legs, and they have gills in order to breathe underwater. But in order to become a frog and go on land, they have to lose their tail, grow legs, and grow lungs instead of gills in order to be able to go on land. So amphibians go through metamorphosis, a change from a youngster to an adult. So we're going to say goodbye to Ziggy, let him go hang out under some moss covered rocks for a little while again. So remember, amphibians are the frogs, the toads, the salamanders, and the Sicilians, and the reptiles are the snakes, the lizards, the turtles, the crocodiles, and the tuataras. Thank you guys very, very much, and have a wonderful rest of your day. Thank you! Thanks so much for joining us. We hope you learned a lot about amphibians and reptiles. We hope you come join us at the Museum of the Rockies and check out live reptiles all summer long. 
Thank you also for having us, and we are super excited. Come see us in Billings at Zoo Montana this summer. There's always some fun things to do when you take a walk on the wild side. And when you come to Zoo Montana, you guys can actually meet our live animal ambassadors up close and personal, because during the summertime, we have amphitheater programs where you guys can learn about these amazing creatures. So thank you so much for joining us today. Have a great day. See ya.